First of all, congratulations for choosing to watch this video. The very fact that you weren't intimidated by the title shows that unlike most gamers, you are serious about understanding how games work. I made this video because I have been surprised that even people good at math fail to see where it is applied in computer games right in front of their eyes. First of all, I should mention that math and programming are not the same thing. While math states provable facts, programming is fundamentally a series of commands for the computer to execute. Therefore, while most programming algorithms only use what is considered basic math, it is what math to use and what order to use it that makes the algorithms complex. Since the actual math used in this video is rather simplistic and boring to derive, I will just explain the algorithms well enough for, for you to set up the math problems and solve them for yourself if you wish to use them. Now the first thing you should know about math in computer games is that you should very rarely, if ever, use trigonometric calculations with angles. So for example, here's the right triangle. So we've got the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. And you know there's a sine, cosine, and tangent thing. Well, you should actually use the triangle definitions because you're really ever going to get the angle as an input so instead you should but you will often get things like the opposite and adjacent and things as input so just use the triangle definitions of the trigonometric functions instead so to see where you might find math in a computer game let's just start out with a typical RTS tutorial now the, obviously there's lots of math involved with the graphics but those are handled nicely by these libraries called DirectX and OpenGL so it's nicely encapsulated for you so I'm not going to get into that but typically the first thing they mention in a tutorial is something like click to select units so I'm going to draw some ground here now there's these two very useful functions in DirectX so called D3 D X spec 3 project and D3 D X spec 3 unproject and it's worth writing them down because they're not very well known and basically what they'll do is for vec3 project you give it the coordinates of the mouse on the screen and then a distance from the camera and then it'll output where the 3D coordinate on the space is. And for unproject, you give it the 3D coordinate in space, and it'll give you the position on the camera. So let's say you use D3DXVec3 unproject. So then you get, this is going to be in 2D, but you can easily put it in 3D also, since the axes are separated. So you get the two points, you make a line, or you more like you get the direction it goes and then you gradually add point you gradually uh, extend the line and find points along it and until you get one line that's above the hill and one line that's below the hill that means that in between there the line hit the hill so after that you can use something called a binary search which means that you take the middle of the point and then if that's and for in this case if that's below the hill then you go above and then if it's above the hill you go below etc and you could do that a bunch of times to find where it hits the map you can also since since the hills are defined as a lot of equations you can also, when you get this down to one equation, you can find where the line hits the hill. But in most cases, with the smooth, if your hills are smooth curves, then you have to do this really complicated solving a cubic equation, which involves imaginary numbers. So it might not always be worth it. So then, after you found the point on the map where the mouse is clicking, you can, f you have to find who to select. 
So that's pretty simple. You just find who is the closest person, and then if that closest unit is with us within a certain distance on the map, then you s that which is a constant. Then you just select that person. But so let's look at our distance formula. So the distance equals the square root of the I'll just simplify this. The difference in the x value squared plus the difference in the y value squared. Now the square now imagine trying to do that square root in your head. Yes, it's going to take a long time. And the same thing applies with computers too. So the so the way to handle this is just to square both sides. And now you have something very similar to the Pythagorean theorem. Since oh yeah, if the distance is uh in this case greater than, then it's okay to select it. Because if, yeah, because if this distance is uh, less than your constant selection distance, then the distance squared is definitely still going to be less than your constant distance. And the, it's these little types of optimizations that are important in games, because in games you're always worried about the frame rate. Now typically the second uh, thing that they explain in an RTS tutorial is that you right click to move. I mean some games use left click but it's almost right, always right click these days. So the first part of course is finding the point on the map where the mouse collides again, which I explained earlier. And then typically the next step, especially if there's lots of obstacles, is something called pathfinding because let's let's say that the the map is like a maze and if so let's say you're starting here and you're ending here and there's an obstacle like this in the way if they just go straight there they're just going to run into this object so you have to use something called pathfinding to get around it and pathfinding is notoriously hard to explain, so I'm not going to try to cover it in here. But if you're interested, look up this algorithm called A star. Or like A star pathfinding or A star algorithm or something like that. And what that'll do is it'll uh, break up the commands into multiple parts. So let's say like go here first and then go here. Now that works okay if you're you're only moving one unit, but most of the time you're usually usually moving multiple units, and often they'd have them in this nice box formation, and then if you tell it to move there, they'll retain their box formation and also move to a different angle. So while well, here it's facing that way, over here it'll be facing that way. So, first of all, let's define these things called flanks. So this would be the left flank, and this would be the right flank. And what you'd end up having is something, is this geometry problem that looks sort of like this. So you're given, let's say you're given the left and right flanks of the unit and the position that it's trying to go to, and remember this might just be one of the commands, and then you're trying to find the new flanks. Now the biggest clue you've got here is that this has to be a right angle, because as you, can, as you might see from here. So, first of all, let's find this point by just taking the center of A and B. Now, there's this rule that states that if, there, if the lines are perpendicular, then the slopes of the lines are going to be the negative reciprocal of each other. So great, now you know the slope of line DE, but how are you going to find the distance? Well, you take the, it's actually the same as the distance from A to F. 